now he's actually going to die and that's really important because the off angle dies out and now this situation is just perfect for this tank and these these are the kind of situations that you want to look for when you're playing the badger world of tanks a to z hello guys and welcome back to the channel today we are going to look at the biggest british tier 10 dpm machine of all time you guys are gonna love this We are again with another episode of the World of Tanks A to Z series. This time we are going to be reviewing the FV217 Badger, the tier 10 British tank destroyer, which is incredibly OP once it is placed in a good position and the enemies are just starting to flow in in front of you. And let's take a look at the stats as usual of now 4.6 thousand DPM, ladies and gentlemen. This number has absolutely blown my mind ever since I laid my hands on this tank. 320 penetration with APCR, 1250 velocity, pretty pretty good. Um, APCR is 270 to 1000. That's also okay if you want to want to play with that. Um, I went ahead also and, and I equipped the tank, and uh, I put uh, the bond rammer, the HP in the HP slot. When I selected the survivability slot here in the field modifications, also bond turbo. In case you don't have bond turbo, you can use the regular turbo. You're going to be suffering a little bit of the extra bonuses that you do not get but it's going to be great nevertheless coffee um here i have selected all the the crew skills that i was using and rammer now yeah 4.6 thousand dpm ladies and gentlemen with a 480 alpha gun with that kind of dispersion and that kind of aiming time that is just heaven for any dpm lover out there including myself so i absolutely enjoyed playing this tank and the dispersion factors also make it sure that you can snipe even at longer ranges with a really good aiming time. Let's take a quick look at the armor model too. Um, I'm gonna put uh, APCR rounds here and actually just show you how armored this tank is. And I mean, look at that. This is just huge. 350 to 400 to 500 millimeters of penetration required dependies. There are these kind of uh, vague weak spots as you can see. You're gonna be facing the badger at these angles most of the time. But these ones are so, so up to chance that people are not going to be panning these uh, automatically. Unless they have high penetration heat shells, of course, like other TDs or, or uh, those uh, Soviet tanks with 340 and the American tanks with 340 heat pan. They will go through this, but not all the time. Because if they lower on the pan, they're just not going to pan. Anywhere here is basically just auto bounce. Here, the, the lower pit is kind of massive. But actually, there are these bait kind of... Uh, sides and cheeks of the lower plate which can soak in those shells and uh, they're not going to do that much damage as you can see there are 290 uh, millimeters of uh, effective armor which is not going to get penned with normal ammunition only 40 percent of the chance but uh, of the time but as you can see if you side scrape the tank like this and you still have enough gun, gun arc to shoot like this kind of like this uh, you can actually also bounce so many shots when you're wiggling your tracks and these tracks are huge and they're thick and they're really really good well armored and you're they're not really gonna pen you even at angles like this they're gonna be struggling now with apcr the case is the same as you can see you can even over angle at some places there they're going to pen but actually your backside is fully uh, fully armored and they're not gonna pen through that of course the whole side and the tracks are quite weak from the side and you can you can really easily track this tank and circle it if you're playing a medium tank or even a faster heavy the side is huge it's very weak and the back can easily pan with HE shells as you can see. Now the only bad thing about this tank was the kind of speed of course. Uh, that's why you try to mitigate the bad speed with uh, having turbo on. Uh, that way you can get 36 top speed, 14 reverse speed and almost 18 power per weight HP to ton ratio which is pretty pretty good. Only thing that's really bad about this is that you can't really use this because most of the time you are going to be struggling with hard terrain and as you can see uh, the terrain resistance values are really really not that great. I would say the effective travel speed and all that also gets improved with turbo and the, the adjacent uh, uh, skills here but it's really really not about the, the mobility. Once you get into a good position and you get a good situation and the enemies are just start to come in front of you as I have said the tank is really really gonna pack a punch and you guys are gonna see that in the replay. I just had this huge huge game and you guys are gonna absolutely love it now. Let's talk about the survival, uh, survivability a little bit here. 2.3k HP, not bad honestly. Uh, insane track health. 
you will never get tracked with the first shot in, in case you're running uh, HP and the, and the food modifications, which I'm going to talk about in a second. The camo values, uh, 27, 26 stationary camo, you're not really going to be snapping in this tank. This is an assault TD, which means that you will want to be in the face of the enemy tanks because you can actually side scrape because the gun and the kind of armor layout uh, enables that. So um, let's take a look at the field modifications now. First, you take reinforced suspension. Very, very important. This gives you plus 30% of suspension durability. As I've mentioned, this basically prevents you from getting tracked the first shot. And also very important that it's, it gives you plus 15% percent to maintaining speed when crossing all terrain times as you can see here if i activate this the terrain res resistances get massively improved so you, it's a must honestly um once again parallax adjustment for the extra uh, dispersion values uh, here i i took a view range because i'm not running vents and this way i have 450 view range with the viewing skills so that's also very important here i've already talked about the survivability slot you want to put the tool uh, the hp in the middle right there and here you also have an interesting choice you either take plus 20% uh, to protection from crew from injuries. This is very unlikely to happen. Honestly, you're getting hit mostly on the lower plate, which, which ends up in the driver dying. Not that important. But it also increases, it, it decreases your DPM massively, as you can see. If I put this on, it's 4.3. If I put the other one on, it's 4.6. So you definitely want to go for the, for the right option here, which basically uh increases your dpm to 4.6 thousand that's huge i mean 6.22 reload for 480 alpha damage man you decide guys but i've absolutely enjoyed playing with this kind of uh, setup now repairable tracks it was also quite important because you're gonna get tracked quite often and you don't really want to burn through those repair kits that fast so that extra 15 percent suspension repair speed and the plus two percent engine power at the cost of a little bit of a reverse speed actually makes a huge difference now let's head over into the game and i'll show you a banger replay you don't want to miss this so guys here we are playing pearl river in the badger and the mm is absolutely fantastic for us Twenty-six thousand hp tier 8 uh, up to tier 10 uh, tanks and they have no artillery only two tds but i or, or i decided to go middle actually because they have a lot of tanks with uh, good turret armor and decent gun depression and there's going to be a lot a lot of paper targets and let's see I'm going to speed this up a little bit and you can see the Burlask has already took the middle and if this situation and, and the position actually works out here perfectly I'm going to have so so much damage as you can see the Bizonte already shows up takes a big meaty hit 512 ST1 comes and the machine gun guys the machine gun nest as I like to call this thing just starts working why machine gun nest because you're just dishing out so so much damage and you're just bouncing and you're pretty much indestructible the Progetto came in for a trade, he bounced 3 shots, we gave me 500 and we are already reloaded and we can already peek. As you can see, you see the angle that I'm side scraping in, they are basically just shooting my uh, tracks here and they have only this small uh, sliver of my lower plate that I've already explained to you, that which is very well armored and that's the only part they can actually shoot. But back onto the replay, you can see that the ST1 is going to make a peek, unluckily we missed there. Uh, these kind of troll misses unfortunately do happen on this tank but it doesn't really matter because with, with this low reload with 6.2 reload uh, it just doesn't matter as you can see I'm, I'm just blocking and, and, and they literally cannot pen me here the Progetto peaks again he took some meaty shot at this angle he can pen me once but now he's actually going to die and that's really important because the off angle dies out and now this situation is just perfect for this tank and these these are the kind of situations that you want to look for when you're playing the badger these situations uh, are not always happening but uh, when they do happen you need to capitalize on them and use them to your own game um the, the enemy team is actually not pushing the the b line at all so my decision to go middle here was absolutely perfect and you can see that these guys are just the, I'm just holding this uh, side on my own. I even have two, uh, one guy dying next to me, the ISM, but the enemy has taken so much damage. Guys, we are up to 5,000 damage. We are up to 5,000 damage in two minutes. I mean, what what other tank could be more perfect for the scenario other than the Badger? And I mean, this is just beautiful. Like, you can just shoot, 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 and the enemy cannot really do anything. If they YOLO into you, you just double track them. And this is also one thing that you need to capitalize when you're playing in this tank. Uh, is that when people expose their tracks, you shoot them twice in the tracks, they use their repair kit, they burn it, and you just double track them and they're held in place and you can just fully farm them down while you are safe. 
at this point I'm just riding forward, uh, it doesn't even matter honestly. Uh, this IS-3 throws away his complete HP, should have ran like his teammates did, and we pick him up in 12 seconds, we pick up a 1500 HP tank guys. Up to 7.3 thousand damage, 3000 blocked, and I mean, I, 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 play this, I play this tank for quite a while, uh, for like 20-25 games, and I absolutely fell in love with it. Also, I was motivated by the amount of damage that the Russian streamers do, and I, I saw like 5k DPGs on this tank, which is not even that rare on the Russian server. Russian server is easier to play, of course, but I mean, that's still pretty, pretty sick. And honestly, guys, if, if you don't want to play the Badger after this video, then I'm not sure what to tell you. We did 8.2 thousand damage in less than 4 minutes, guys. I, it's just, it's just, I'm just completely mind blown by the fact how good this, thi this, this thing is. Now, of course, you're going to be getting into those situations where this tank is not going to be making those damages because one, it's going to be an open map, two, it's going to be like a, a map where you need to get into position but you get flanked by a, by a medium tank and a light tank. Uh, because obviously you don't have a turret so you can't really shoot but honestly you guys have to pay attention to that and the match is over in four and a half minutes with 8.7 thousand damage 4,000 blocked and i had absolute blast and fun playing this tank so yeah some afterthoughts about the badger the tank is very very situational as you can see if you get a situation like this you're just going to be doing so so much damage but uh you need to kind of work and base this tank around the enemy's lineup, the enemy's MM, what they get. If it's a full tier 10 matchmaking, you kind of have to be in a support role and you kind of have to side scrape those corners and go into those uh, semi hooldown positions and try to use your uh, teammates and enemies' wrecks as well to go hooldown because if your lower plate is exposed, you're going to be taking a lot of damage if the enemy has a brain. So yeah, guys, this tank is very situational. It's super, super fun. And I completely and, and wholeheartedly recommend you to, to try this out. And I promise you, you guys are going to have fun. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button, like and comment what you think about this tank. If you have played it, if you haven't played it, if you're going to play it, just tell me your opinion about it. And also guys, as I mentioned in my previous video, at 5,000 YouTube subs, I'm going to be marking an STB1 on stream without the use of gold ammunition. Now that should be fun, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.